Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Plan Sarah Plan, and today I'm going to review the Clever Fox Monthly Budget Bind. Welcome to my channel. This is the third review that I've done in a series, sort of. I've got three planners that I have reviewed because Clever Fox sent them to me. This one is the last of the three. The other two, if you're interested in this brand, were the Wellness Planner and the Teacher Planner. So now we're gonna go on to money and review their budget planner. They do offer a bill organizer, just several other financial tools that you might wanna take a look at. But I picked this one, the binder, which I would just call an agenda rather than a binder. But here we are. It has several different colors that you can get it in. This is obviously black. It has the Clever Fox logo embossed right there. There's black stitching here, silver hardware on the snap. And let's dig into it. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing is all of the pockets. There's a zipper pocket here, and it goes to the end of this area here, which is also a pocket. There are one, two, three, four credit card or other types of card slots, gift cards. There's a larger slot here, which could be for receipts, and then an even larger one here, which could also be for receipts. It could also house the sticker sheets, which I will show you. There are three sticker sheets. Then in the back, oh, I wasn't gonna show you that part yet, but you're gonna see it anyway. There is a kind of dual pocket back here. There's a slide in from the top, tall pocket, and then another pocket that would be about the same size as the one like this in the front. So you have lots of pockets. The other thing that I noticed right away is that you have this clear plastic kind of protector in front of your title sheet. There's also one in the back. All right, so Clever Fox Budget Planner Binder. And the first section is goals. So you have room for eight goals. Here you are, your goals might be to save up for buying a car with cash or save up for Christmas, get my student loan paid off, get out of debt, pay down my mortgage, any financial goals that you want to put here. And you could write them big, you don't have to put details about them, you could just make them very prominent. Then my strategy, new skills I need to learn to achieve my financial goals my money affirmations for wealth and prosperity, actions I will take to earn more money, actions I will take to cut my expenses. So you may choose to use all of those or just some of them. You could even change the headers if there's something else that you want to use instead. Now, here's something I appreciate. There is an undated monthly calendar that also has some functional boxes with it. So you could start this at any month during the year since it's undated. It has a Sunday start, Saturday finish, and you would just write your dates in or you could probably find some date stickers to put on there. There is a notes sidebar right here that's lined. Monthly goals here. To-do list with little checkoff circles bills and expenses, due date and amount. So this would just be a list of bills. This is not enough for my typical monthly bills. So this might be something that I used instead for irregular expenses. If there was a birthday this month or if our car insurance was due this month, something like that. And then income, you get four lines for that or five, five lines for income, amount, savings, you also get five lines and amount. So I would probably, since I do a lot of side hustles, I'm self-employed and have a lot of very small sources of income, I might divide this up and use both for income, or not divide it up, but just change it for my income there. Because you will have places for savings coming up, and then you stick with that same color scheme and go to your monthly budget. So we have categories here for home, food, healthcare, credit and loans, personal, transportation, entertainment, other. And then there are columns for budgeted, actual, and the difference. So if you went over or under budget, you would put in the difference. I like that we have budgeted and actual, not just budgeted. And then at the bottom of this section, total that you budgeted, the total actual, and the total difference. 
and there's a little flag with the Clever Flox logo at the top of each page, then you get expense trackers. So this could be where you put every little expense, things that you use your debit card for, or if you write checks, any sort of expenses. It could also be things that you put on credit cards to pay at the end of the month. Just log the expenses all in one central place here. You have columns for date, description, category, and amount. So if you want to go with these categories, you would want to probably nail down one of those eight categories unless you've redefined them and covered them with a sticker or something. So you get one, two, three, four expense tracker pages, which I think is probably ample. I think that's great. I probably would need two of these or possibly three of those. So four is ample, at least in my case. Then look at this fun thing. At the end of the month, you total up. You list your opening balance. I would probably use it just for my opening checking account balance. Then your total income, your total expenses, and then the difference, the total savings, and the balance forward. It's really like your ending balance, I think. So you would carry that forward to the beginning of the next month and put it in your opening balance. And then you can analyze, if you're a visual person, you can analyze your spending. And all of these little pie pieces are representing 5% of 100%. Once you have totaled up your categories, which you do down here on the bottom of the page, home, food, healthcare, credit and loans, personal, entertainment, transportation, and other. And there are some other categories here if you want to add more. But once you add these up and you figure out the percentage that they represent of your total spending, then you can shade it in and just get a, an idea of where you spend the most money. You could skip that if you wanted to, but I know a lot of people really are visual and it helps them to just see, oh wow, my food and grocery budget really took up a big chunk of the pie and I didn't really realize it was going to do that. So it may help you to see it visually like that. Then you can do a monthly review by answering my biggest wins this month did I meet my budget? And if not, why? Because something unusual could have happened, right? Did I achieve this month's goals? If not, why? Where did I have the most trouble and what could I do to improve next month? Actions I will take next month to increase my income. Actions I will take next month to cut my expenses. Now you may not be able to increase your income next month. You may be able to cut your expenses though, or vice versa. Maybe if you cannot cut the expenses, maybe you can pick up some more income somehow. So that could be a good way to log some ideas that you have. Then you get two dot grid pages that are headed with notes and ideas. So this could be other brainstorming, brain dumping of ideas. Then you go into a new month and a new color scheme. So the layout will be the same. This one's kind of teal. The first one I would call sort of forest green or a dark sage green. And then let's just flip through so you can see all of the colors. There's purple. Then there's sort of a mauve. And then we've got teal again. Is this the same teal? Looks like it is. Dark coral green again. This one looks like taupe. It's like a darker purple. This is a very, very dark teal green. Peach. And back to mauve. That color doesn't quite match. It's similar, but it doesn't quite match. So I don't know if these are arranged improperly or if that was just a printing issue. We are back to this teal. So there are 12 months total in here. A whole lot of pages. As you can see, after all of the 12 months, you have some extras. So let's go to the back and you've got savings trackers here. So let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of those. You have room for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So one line per month or just use it as it works for you. You write down what you're saving for, the amount that you need, and the due date if there is one. And these columns say date, deposit amount, and total saved. And then you go on to debt tracking. So you could use this for loans or credit cards, any sort of debt. 
the debt name, the starting balance and your minimum payment, the date amount paid, and the balance that is still due. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Woo, nine, 10, 11, 12. So you could have 12 different debt accounts that you're working on. And then holiday budgeting up here at the top, holiday budget, category slash expense, budgeted and actual. And then gifts, wrapping and cards, groceries, decorations, and then you can write in anything else that you want to here. And then your total, holiday gifts, recipient, gift, budgeted, and actual. I think I might need a larger space for this if I were going to log every single gift. If you don't do a lot of gift giving during the holidays, that might be perfect. And then you have a whole page for holiday spending. And is that it? Yes, one whole page, sort of just like the spending tracker pages for holiday spending. And then this is your regular bill tracker. This looks cool. What is this? You get two of them. And on this column, you list the bill. And on this column, you list the month, I would imagine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, six months and six months. Okay, so that explains the thing where I was thinking that I would need more space for the bills and expenses. That, I think, is going to be unusual bills and expenses instead of your regular ones. This is your regular bill tracker. So you have room for a whole lot of those. I would estimate you have 25 to 30 possible bills here. And then you could put the amount for each month and check it off as you go if you want to. So this is gonna be a page that you refer to often if you fill that out. Then your summary of the year. Oh my goodness. This is six months and this is six months. This is pretty cool how it's laid out. So you'll put, I don't know if you can see the lines, but there are light gray lines dividing the columns. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, or start it in July if you want to. Just any starting month since this is undated. Income savings, and then your eight categories that are already listed, but you could list more if you wanted to. Home, food, healthcare, credit and loans, personal, transportation, entertainment, and then a bunch of empty spaces. If you have irregular expenses some of the time, if you pay something twice a year, there's all kinds of room down here for those types of things. And you can compare from month to month. So in January, I spent this much on my home. In February, I spent this much. And you can compare throughout the year. Down here, you can total up all of your expenses. And these should be numbers that you can actually just pull forward from your monthly summary when you had your categories at the bottom of the pie graph. That's where you would have your totals. Your total income and expenses is at the top of that page. So you're really just carrying it forward to see all of the year at once. Then you've got dot grid spreads. Let's see how much of that we get. One, two, three, four, five, six. And because it's dot grid, you could make charts, you could make more ledgers, whatever you need. I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then the back is not dotted. So that could be one extra page for each month, or you could just use this as needed to make extra charts or to jot down ideas. There's a divider that is this kind of frosted plastic like the one in the front. And looky what you get. All right, a budget sheet, probably one for every month. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And it says opening balance. So because they say budget sheet, I would assume that they're designed to use as a cash envelope system. So you're spending for your groceries and other expenses out of cash envelopes. That's not how I personally would use it because I tend to use a debit card for those expenses. It's just easier for me to keep track of them and not forget, or if I did forget to log it, I have it recorded online in my bank account. So I don't really use cash envelopes for my regular monthly spending. However, I think they're great for savings. So if you have gone to the grocery store, for example, sometimes the register will pop up a question that says, would you like cash back? 
And if there's no fee, sometimes I will get $10 back or $20 back and just tuck it in my savings and forget about it. That's probably what I would use these for. I would cover up budget sheet and just use it as savings sheet or maybe a category of savings. But look, you don't really have to do that because you've got cash envelope budget system category right here. So I might not use it for my budgeting. I might just use it for a certain savings goal. I might write that there on the category. You've got budgeted and actual here. I don't know if I would use that, but that is very handy if you are doing a cash envelope system. This could be a sinking funds envelope. This could be saving up for when I'm going to pay our auto insurance next year or saving up for a vacation, or saving up for Christmas shopping, or any other goal that you have. And you got one, I'm gonna guess there are 12, but I don't know, one, two, three, look at the colors, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And it looks like these colors match the colors that were throughout the planner. I love that they have the holes punched in them and that you can take them out so you could store them elsewhere if you wanted to, but it's kind of neat that they're here in the back. You don't have to use these together if you don't want to. You could actually just use this as something that goes with your monthly budget. So if you wanted to list all of the bills that were due, you could use it for that instead and just pop it in right here. It's double-sided, so you could use this any way you want to. I think it probably is meant for the envelopes, but I think I would probably use it as an add-on. That way, when I'm ready for the next month's budget, I could pop this out if I wanted to and use it to help me carry forward expenses for the new month, or I could just take a matching budget sheet. I don't know if that's the one that really matches. That one looks like a little bit closer match. And then I could transfer it over to that. It's just up to you. Because it's in a ring system, you can rearrange it any way that you want to. You could add or remove sheets if you wanted to. And I really just think it's neat that they've got all these plastic sheets in here to protect different elements of the planner. So we'll put the envelopes back in here. They're coated, so they, they seem very water resistant or drink resistant. Of course, water could get in here, but this is very durable. So it would last you for the whole year. Pretty sure of that. And let's see how easily it closes. Works just fine. I think these frosted protectors kind of act as page lifters. And if you know me from my binder planning days, you know that I'm big on page lifters. Very big on that. Okay, so let's talk price. I printed off the sheet from the Clever Fox Planner website. It's $33.99, but definitely use a discount code. My code is Plan Sarah Plan. It's Plan Sarah with an H Plan, all one word. That gets you 10% off. So you can get this cover, same cover, just different color. Peach pink, rose gold, black, hot pink, dark green, lavender, purple, mint green, red or turquoise. Free shipping in the US, Canada, and the UK. Encrypted checkout process, cover material is vegan leather, in stock and ready to ship. I noticed that you can also get this on Amazon for $1 less, but it's actually less expensive to get it on the Clever Fox website using a discount code. It takes $3.40 off. Let's also talk stickers, I almost forgot. You get three sticker sheets with the budget planner binder. Two of them are the same. So these two are the same, this one's different. They all have a rose gold metallic accenting effect. There are lots of little flags here. When you pull the stickers off, I'll show you the size. Here you go, there's the size. And I love how little they are because they're gonna fit on those little lines well. It's okay to be frugal. Great things never came from a comfort zone. Goals that are not written are just wishes. Never spend your money before you have it. New Monday, new week, new goals. The best way to stick to a budget is to start one. I'm not going to read it all, but that gives you a sampling. Lots of little dots down here. Then these two are the same. You've got some triangle payday stickers. How many? 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, so 28 altogether. You could mark 28 paydays. Reminder, don't forget priority, savings, vacation, no spend, hustle, debt, debt paid, bill due, just all sorts of things that you can add to that monthly calendar spread. Some icons for dollar signs, airplane, automobile, home, and those repeat. Love the little bill stickers. Check this out. Love the little bill stickers. Wow. These are matte finish. This is a safe, so you could use those to illustrate your savings. Little pictures of credit cards, budget stickers with a pen and a calculator, and some rose gold piles of cash. So I think these are just terrific for the planner, and let's see how they fit in the large pocket. Yeah, they fit really well right there. Clever Fox Planners come with a warranty card, 60-day money-back guaranteed, no hassle, refund, and no questions asked. Lots of ideas for how you might use their planner. This is your quick start guide, savings trackers, that pie graph, and your monthly review, the holiday budget and gifting. See, they used up the whole holiday gift area too. I think maybe the holiday gifts ought to be over here and the holiday spending ought to be over here. I'm not positive though. Besides these illustrations, you get explanations underneath each picture as well. So that's really helpful. The binder itself or the agenda is seven by nine, but these pages are A5 size. So if you have other A5 planning sheets or budgeting sheets that you want to use, you certainly could. You also don't have to hold all 12 months in here at one time. If you're gonna take this on the go and maybe you've got some cash down in this pocket, maybe this is going to be like a large wallet in essence for you. You might really just want to have the current month in there to lighten the load. That's totally up to you. What would you use these pockets for? Especially this big one, what would you put in here? I'm thinking I would tuck my receipts in there. I probably would not put my credit cards in here unless I decided to use this as an ultra large wallet and just keep it in my bag. That would not be practical for me because I do not take a bag to an office and park it there. Um, I'm always helping my mother three days a week. I help her and I do a lot of errands and things that it would just not be practical for me to do that. But it would be practical for me to use it at home. I think it's really a neat planner. I think it has a lot of original features to it. I especially got excited when I saw the cash envelopes. I just think that's a wonderful addition to this planner. This is sort of a premium design. I think some of their other budget planners would not have those envelopes, but you'll just have to check on the website to see. I'm going to keep this quick start guide in the back here in case I need to refer to it in the future. Feels really soft. So this concludes my series, if you wanna call it that, of Clever Fox Planner Reviews. Here are some other colors that you might consider. This one was aquamarine, this is rose gold, this is black. So I know that at least some of the covers come with a metallic shimmer to them. The black one has a matte finish, can't speak for the others, but I think they all are going to have this Clever Fox logo on the front. And I think you can count on them all having some very unique features in them. And I've enjoyed reviewing all three of these planners. I really think they're great. I actually might be using this for my teacher planner next year. I haven't decided, but I love the vertical layout in here. And I'm just basically impressed with the Clever Fox Company. I think they have some nice functional planners to offer in many different categories, not just the three that I've got here. So again, thank you guys for watching my Clever Fox Budget Planner Binder Review. Tell me what you think. Would you add anything to it? Do you miss anything that this one does not have? Tell me what you think. The website is cleverfoxplanner.com and the discount code that I can offer you is Plan Sarah Plan for 10% off. I do have a link below if you don't wanna type it in. If you just wanna click on it, feel free to do that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.